Welcome to Building with Brick, Foundational Wisdom on Coaching, Careers, and Christ. This leadership podcast was spawned by Coach Brickner's book, So You Want to Be a Coach, which is the story of a corporate executive who made a drastic career change and became a head men's basketball coach. Dr. Brickner's book is available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook on Amazon.com or go to his website, www.drjoebrickner.com. That's D R J O E Brickner.com. While you're at it, check out Dr. Brickner's new book, America Lost in Place. You can get it in paperback, hardback, ebook, or audiobook on Amazon.com or just go to Dr. Brickner's website. Now, here's this week's podcast. Welcome to Building with Brick, Foundational Wisdom on Coaching Careers in Christ. This is Building with Brick Special Edition this week. I have a guest that isn't quite typical of the guests that I've had before. Most of my guests have been athletes, coaches, trainers. And my guest this week, Ruth Murray, I don't know about the athletic side, but she's definitely a coach and trainer. So, (laughs) Ruth, welcome to the show. It's really nice to have you. Thank you, Joe. It's a delight to be here and to get to talk about what I'm so excited about. Well, this is this is great. This is uh, Ruth is a registered nurse, an educator, and she has some stories about how she got into the topic that we're going to talk about today. And the topic is really how your brain and your body work together uh, and and what you can do to facilitate and and improve and make it more efficient, uh, more effective. And this lends itself not only to everyday life, but we think we can touch some areas of athletics too, which my, my audience is normally athletic. And, and I want them to hear this. This is something that intrigued me. I know Ruth because we belong to the uh, same organization, the Core of Renewal and Charity, CORAC, C-O-R-A-C. Ruth is the representative for our region on the Health and Wellness Committee, the National Committee. And myself and my wife, Connie, were the regional directors for Region 10, which is Kansas and Nebraska. Ruth is in Omaha, and she's been just a great member for us. And uh, Corex only about two years old, but Ruth has been just wonderful in helping us make things happen. And uh, so we're up in Omaha periodically. She hosts different things for the Corex organization. And So publicly, Ruth, I want to thank you for being our health and wellness coordinator for our region. Uh, Not doing that much for it, but I certainly welcome whatever little I do get done. Well, that that, and if people go out on the CORAC website, which is www.corac.co, not .com, .co, if they go out there, they can just see a wealth of information on health and wellness and there's just so many topics to talk about, homeopathy, you, you name it. There, there are great topics and uh, training vehicles out there. But today we're going to talk about something that is, it was foreign to me, but we had breakfast in Omaha a few months ago, and Ruth got into talking about this, and I thought, this is fascinating. This is just fascinating on different things, techniques that you can do to really help you in some areas that maybe you've been taking medicine to do, and and maybe you don't have to take medicine to take care of some of these areas. And I'm going to let Ruth get into the specifics of it. But uh, before we do, Ruth, you might give us a little bit of background on how you went from being a registered nurse to getting into these different techniques that we're going to talk about. Okay. Well, we have four sons, my husband and I, and I was working part time as a nurse and. And three of the kids are neurologically atypical. It, 
not doesn't quite fit ADD. It's not autism. It's not this. It's not that. It's it, and they aren't sure what it is. So, but it was obvious that my kids needed me more than my patients. So I quit that and eventually saw that I should be homeschooling. So God dragged me kicking and screaming into homeschooling. Don't make me do that. Those people are weird. This was back in the 1980s and oh, you know, 1990s and, and that that's too odd. And, you know, within five years, I, like many other people are going, everybody should homeschool. <laughs> but I started looking because my the, these kids, the, her, their IQs are stratospheric. I started looking to see what would help them with their non-abstract life, with concrete life that was so difficult for them. And I went down many paths that were either minimally helpful, just plain weird, thank you God, I'm Catholic, we're not doing that. Um, expensive, maybe it may be helpful, but expensive and couldn't afford that because we were down to one income. And I finally found brain gym. And I had seen it several years before, but thought, well, no, that's, that's odd. That's not going to help anybody. Uh, I knew from my nursing background, it did, it was just, how is something weird like that going to change anything? But when you're desperate, you're desperate. So I started looking into it more and lo and behold, things changed hugely. Per dollar, it was the cheapest, most effective not contradicting the Catholic Church, most effective way I could help my kids. And I found out that, you know, I'm the put together one in the family. The kids take after their father, really high IQ, kind of spacey. I found it was helping me. I was going around in a right brain fog. If I did 20 minutes of brain gym exercises a day, I got two and a half hours more productivity. Wow. It was kind of astonishing. Wow. And the kids were so different. One had kind of had a, a dazed look in his face, never could finish projects. All of a sudden, dazed look went away. He was sitting up straight. He was finishing his projects. Things were much better. Attention span was, was improved uh, far more than the Ritalin we had tried to put him on. Next son, the, the Taekwondo teacher said, hey, what'd you do with him? Because that's not him. He, somebody's in, in his suit, but that's not him. He's paying better attention. He's, his, form, his Taekwondo forms are better. He's even showing leadership skills. This was wacky. Another kid picked up writing. I thought that, you know, I, well, yeah, he had a problem. I'd forgotten when he stopped doing the exercises. I had forgotten this had been a huge elephant in the room. He spent eight hours trying to write a paragraph, and graphite did not touch paper. Wow. And finally, I said, well, try those exercises again. Because, you know, he, he had picked up writing. He did 20 minutes of exercises, picked up his pencil, and in the next hour, wrote two sides of a paper. Wow. Incredible. And I thought, well, okay, there's something to go on, on here, but with my anatomy, physiology, neurology, pediatrics, nothing was explaining this. I had to really delve into it to find out what, what really was going on. And now in this you know, brain, gym, in brain gym, did you do the training or did you take them to I, I took the training. And worked when a three day training went home and looked at the kids and said, We're going to do this. And they're, uh, <laughs> and, you know, if they if if it doesn't work and they could see it work, they could see it help. So they're they're all in. Yeah. When the same when my brain gym instructor called and said, You got to come to this class. Well, she's always come getting crazy ideas and stuff, but sometimes they pay off. So I went to a balavisics class and danged if that didn't help. Then my youngest was graduating high school and going off to college. Mom, I don't need your homeschooling anymore. I was going to fold brain gym and balavisics into uh, 
a counseling practice because I have found it does tremendous things for attention span and emotional difficulties and learning issues. And a lot of times when you get all that, the IQ goes way up, but they get learning issues. And, and so you can be gifted with learning disabilities. And what do you do when your your brain is ready for to do calculus, but your your eyes and your 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 body don't know whether that's a three or a sigma. They don't know which way to put a three. That can give you an awful lot of angst. So I was going to put all this together. I lasted one semester, one, one afternoon in Masters of Social Work class. Even back in 2009, they were way too woke for me. And I thought I had discovered rhythmic movement training by then. And rhythmic movement training has more of a Patho pathophysiological explanations for what's going on. And I found reasons for, I found the, the, the reasons why so many gifted kids have what they call Dombrowski's overexcitabilities. They're just hypersensitive in hearing or in, it, you know, they can hear everything. They can't, um, they can't filter out anything. You're hypersensitive to, to light. Uh, to to touch, you don't like uh, tags in clothes or belts or or seams in socks, or you really don't even like blue jeans because they can be too too stiff. A lot of kids go around in in um, in sweats, and that and at that down low, not not on their waist because they can't handle anything on their back. These kids also tend to be hyperactive, fidgety may bed wet late uh, after five. And we found that if you do the exercises for this, not only does your attention span improve, your alertness, focus improve, the uh, hyperactivity decreases or goes away. We found you do those exercises for women of my age, see the gray hair, who sometimes need depends. And within a month or two, they don't need depends anymore. Hmm. They can go from zero control to 100% control, bladder control wow. in a month. Wow. Yeah. That's terrific. Yeah. Well, what, what, um, what are so some... it's just a tremendous amount of things like that. And rhythmic movement training uh, was founded by Harold Dempsey, who is a, who, Harold Blomberg, who was a Swedish iconoclastic psychiatrist. And Moira Dempsey, who is an Australian kinesiologist and teacher, found it and said, hey, we've got to do something. So the two of them founded rhythmic movement training, and it has a lovely structure of explanation for medical professionals on how primitive reflex integration changes the world. And that term is when when you say that i think about a child a, a baby a baby moving from being a baby to a toddler and learning right. primitive things right in utero we have reflexes that help us mature grow and stay safe in utero and when we're vulnerable and largely immobile that works for us. We get born, we're still largely immobile, so we're being carried around. Mm -hmm. And we need to be put on our tummies so that we can learn to look up and see near and far because that works for much more than basketball. It works for uh, looking at the blackboard and down. And our, our eyes need to be able to focus far and focus near without much of a difficulty. We need to be able to put our eyes in different fields without difficulty. And some people can't do it. Wow. And so if, and so as we learn to be mobile and not vulnerable, 
because if you know i'm if i'm a, an infant on in a crib i'm immobile if there's a fire there's not much i can do if i'm a two-year-old there's a fire ooh, ooh, run 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 mommy mommy help I need as a two-year-old to not be immobilized and say, oh, there's a fire. What am I going to do? I need to put away those baby vulnerability, immobility reflexes and assume my postural, I can stand up, I can sit up, I can run, I can maintain uh, my balance. I can look where I'm going. I can listen. Too often in our affluenza technological world we're having enough of our sensory uh experiences muffled and mm. so we don't put away those other reflexes mm. and that is the cause the root root cause of a lot of our difficulties everything from anxiety i'm getting three and four year olds in on heavy duty anti-anxiety medications it's at the root of our ADD, and and I think it's at the root of a lot of the autism. Really? ADD, ADHD, it's our body saying, you're not safe. So I'm always having to look and see what I'm safe. So if I can't automate my body, part of my upper brain function has to take that in. If I can't automate and say, no, I don't need to pay attention to my back, it feels like somebody's picking at my back all the time. I can't pay attention like that. Mm -hmm. If I can't say, no, I've learned how to, to shut out other sounds and pay attention to the teacher, I'm not going to learn easily. If my head thinks that when I'm down, my arms have to be straight and my legs are, are uh, bent, and if I look up, it has to be the other way around. I'm going to be sitting back on the back two, two legs of my, cha of my chair, or my legs are going to be out in front of me, but it's, I'm very distracted. And so you've got techniques that can fix that. Well, babies learn how to do it somehow. Yeah. Dr. Blomberg and, and Kirsten Linda, ahead of him, looked and said, oh, well, if babies normally do that and they grow up to be fine, but we see babies that don't do that, they grow up to have problems. How about we take the kids that have problems, do some of the exercises or the movements and put in some of that, that stimulation and darned if the kids didn't get better. Blomberg and others now are, are, are tweaking and um, distilling out the, the, the important parts, the important bits that will help it be much more uh, effective for kids and adults. Because as we age, these primitive vulnerable reflexes, you know, when we're older and we don't move as well, we're more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Those vulnerable reflexes come forth and it, it throws off our balance. When we're standing, one of the older ladies I, I met uh, said, you know, the hardest, hardest thing about getting old for me was learning. I couldn't stand and look and say, oh, look at that in the window. No, she says, if I have to do that, I have to turn my whole body. Mm. Well, that's the baby fencer reflex where arm goes here and is here and the legs there. That if the arms here, I've got it. If, if my head turns, my arm has to turn. Well, if her head's turning, her body has to turn and she's not moving her head enough anyhow. So her, her balance system is off. What if a lot of our aging uh, symptoms and our quality of life are, are, are impacted by us not moving as much? Hmm. Yeah. Put in that sensory input and you sure change the quality of life and the amount of movement and the amount of things you're able to do. Yeah, that, that's really true. I, <clears throat> I've kind of experienced that myself and that, you know, I've 
I am uh, have been very, very active athletically ever since college. After I got out of college, I just kept playing basketball and, you know, lifting weights, running, all that type of thing. Still doing it today. And I just returned from a tournament that I played in Florida. We've got our team is a bunch of guys that are 70 and over. And we we were playing against the younger guys, the 65 and over guys. <laughs> but I mean, those babies, we were playing full court. We had four games. We had five games in four days. You know, it was regular full court. Uh, so and guys were moving, getting knocked down, not getting hurt. It doesn't Love matter. It. Yeah, and, and and I look around, and there are other people that are our age that are really struggling just to go down steps. Well, what do we do? We st sit and we type. We do our crossword puzzles so that we keep the top part of our brain sharp because we, we know to exercise that. But there's all the rest of the, our brain just below that that automates our body mm -hmm. that also needs input. And if we eat and we work on the computer and we talk on the phone, how much is my neck moving? Yeah, how much? <laughs> how much is your neck moving when you look up and you throw the ball and, oh, let's come over here and do that? Yeah. You're having to react fast and you're doing that. But how much do we do it? We drive, we type, we talk, we write. We even just cut up food but it's all in front of us. Mm -hmm. This is our anxiety area. If you turn your eyes, eyeballs, not, uh, not head, eyes to the side, uh, one of my exercises is eyes to the side. It's amazing what happens to your muscle tone, to your tension, muscle tension. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get into some of those techniques, uh, but before we do, <clears throat> why don't you tell us a little bit about, I know you had success with your children and using Brain Gym, but uh, you actually started a practice and you had clients and, and et cetera. So what are a few of the success stories you have with the techniques you use with your clients? Well, first I started with some fe fellow homeschooler friends and said, hey, come on over. And they were astonished at sometimes in a day, a learning log jam, she says, was broken. And kid went from not competent to very competent in a day. I've had one young man, 22, came to me. He would like to sketch a little, a little more, he says, and play video games a little less. And he didn't have a job and wasn't capable of that. That's not where he was. He's not your average kid. And I said, well, our, our thing is to say, let's see how you do first so we can see if there's a change. And I had him draw me a picture. And it turned out to be a self-portrait. And I, I sent it to you. If you can put it up, that's great. If not, sure. but it was, it was sticks. It was stick figure and poorly drawn stick figure at that. And I said, oh, okay. Cause sometimes people are a little savantish and can really draw well. I was not knowing, but he drew something that, yeah, I thought, yep, that matches how you look like you can do. Mm -hmm. And we did exercises 15, 20 minutes, maybe. And the difference post, I, I said, okay, now draw yourself. Before he'd had just a face, after he had face with eyes, with pupils, a smile, not just a, a, a one thing, Amazon smile. He had an open mouth smile. He had a 3D body. He had written hi next to it. And it was just such a delighted figure and he looked as different. He was giddy happy. I ran into his mother last year who said, yeah, he's got a job now. He's got a job. Wow. I only got to see him the once. They had very limited funds. But mom came to my classes and said he's got a job. 
That's great. Now, what technique did you use with him in such a... I, I, which, which thing do you want? He says, oh, I think those brain gyms look fine. So we did 25 minutes, 20, 10, 10, 20 minutes of brain gyms. Now, what's... Of, what's of brain gym what's, exercises. There are 26 main ones. And what are a couple of them so that the audience and myself would, would know? Okay, well... If you want to watch my TED Talk, I demonstrate one on the TED Talk. But another one of my favorites that is almost universally wonderful is you take a, your thumb. You're about that far from your body. So you can measure your arm okay. that far from your body. Okay. And you're going to watch your thumbnail as you go up and to the left and down and up and to the right and down and you're drawing an infinity sign okay and it's really fun to try reading beforehand now your head your head is following try and with your head not following just you might have to have somebody get behind you and hold your head <laughs> so that you can do it with your eyeballs Okay. See, and you, you're you're a basketball player, an active basketball player, and it's hard to get you to just do it with just your eyeballs. Yeah. Those eye muscles are big. So you can do it with your dominant hand and then do it with your non-dominant hand and see what that's like. If during one of these areas, if every time you reach, for instance, up here, you notice you feel different somehow your attention lags you get emotional uh it's harder to see if i know i'm going to hit it when i'm up here i come back to here and then i come at it very very slowly and then so you do it with dominant hand non-dominant hand then you take both fingers and can you see that can yes. you see that you've got a bit of a heart here? Yeah. And do it with both fingers, both hands. It changes where and how it works in your brain. Changes people's reading. People say, I can read faster. My comprehension is better. I will get, I've, I've got a, a, a lovely Vanna White. Come here, Vanna White. What's the male form of Vanna White? I've got a demonstration here. <laughs> I love doing this with couples that are having, this is my husband, Duncan. I Hello, Duncan. Good to see you. Couples who are having trouble uh, with marriage and communication. So we, you grab your hand like this and you grab hands together. Like you're going to do a thumb war. Okay. And you do lazy eights between you and talk between you. Because this is going between right brain and left brain. It's going between my awareness of other people and my awareness of myself. Uh, the, aware the awareness of gestalt, the big picture, and the details. And so you go between details and big picture and you can you're watching your thumb and then you're watching your partner and watching your thumb it is amazing how that changes your ability to communicate and to hear moreover it it's great for those people who get overwhelmed with emotion you know there's the maxwell house and he's she's making the maxwell house coffee and here he comes in from the war <laughs> or People at, uh, at brides at a wedding, you know, she's going to get overwhelmed. She's not going to remember, but she's overwhelmed. I said, you can't do this on the altar, but you can do it with your eyeball. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if you can't do that because it might be too hard, look in all four quadrants. Look in this quadrant. Look in this quadrant. Look in this quadrant. Look in this quadrant. And even just doing an X with your eyes will help you maintain logic and not keep you overwhelmed. The brides will come back and say, did you see me on the altar? I was well. She says it really works. 
And so then every bride goes and tells it, tells all their friends, when you're on the altar, you get overwhelmed. You're doing the, like this. <laughs> I can imagine what the priest thinks. <laughs> well, you know, he's busy being priest and, and, and conducting the mass. <laughs> um, uh, I do it at funerals. If I get overwhelmed with, with sorrow at the funerals, I kick my logic brain in when I look over on the right. I go back to the emotional and say it's okay to be emotional and it, and here's the logical part of it. And it keeps me from getting overwhelmed with sorrow because I'm a very emotional person. Yeah. Now, Ruth, you said there's like 25 or 26 of these techniques in brain. 26 in brain gym. Okay. But I've got I've got 15 programs that I use. Oh, okay. So, you know, brain gym will take you in millions of places and there are people out there brain is probably the most accessible program people could you could get to there are people out there who have uh 26 who just do a day-long uh thing teaching you the 26 movements when i was teaching brain gym we i did a three-day program that said, okay, these are the 26 movements, which is a little like learning the 26 letters of the alphabet. Mm -hmm. But now let's go learn to read. Let's put them in practice. Okay. And that's where the real changes happen. But you can get enormous things from just doing brain gym. Now, does, like... Do you have a set of those 26 that are for like some type of an emotional situation? You have another 20, another five of them that do something else. There are things that will, well, there are exercises that tend to be, this tends to help you feel more safe. This tends to help you communicate and keep a sense of proportion. And those help you set, center and ground yourself. Know who you are and, and do thoughts and emotions. But we, and when we talk about crossing the midline, most people understand it. It's we're crossing this midline. We go and do things over here with this. We do things over there with that. Learn to brush your teeth with your non-dominant hand kind of things. We're 3D people. Yeah. We have a we have a a, a, a horizontal uh, midline right up, right above our belly button. We have another vertical line through here. Crossing from back to front seems to help uh, you go from safety to engagement. I'm scared. I'm going to be in back. I can go and do things. I can be in front. This is my thinking. This is my scared. Mm. This is my thinking. This is my emotions. So if I can come back through here, I can get thinkings and emotions together. Although you can get some of that here. Because this is the logic. But this looks, this isn't the thinking part and this isn't the emotion part. Although more emotions, I think, tend to be here. But anger is in the left brain, and that's an emotion. So and we'll, we'll wrap up this first part with this, if you don't mind. If you have someone who gets angry often and, and over things that really you shouldn't get angry over, mm -hmm. what, what would you suggest using the brain gym type thing, or if you have something else that would, you would use? Any brain gym can help that. Any one of the brain gyms can help that. I have sent you a link uh, on doing pace. Keeps you positive, active, clear, and energetic. And a Mrs. Lambert does a pretty good job of teaching that. It's four brain gym exercises. The first of which is take a drink of water. It's that easy. <laughs> um any one of them, it depends on why we're getting mad. Mm -hmm. Is it a reflex that's off? Is it, we, we tend to get mad or frightened when we're frightened. 
You know, I'm frightened that I'm not being respected. I'm frightened that I'm being overlooked. Why are you getting frightened? Is it I'm frightened because I know I can't solve that? Maybe you can't solve it because your eyes are stuck right in here and doing this would help. Maybe it's because your electrical system in your body is frightened and another thing will help. Mm. It I, that There's not one thing that says what will calm you down, uh, especially if you look at uh, primitive reflexes that are started in utero, if those are active, the I am not safe, and you can't start out with those generally, um, you're going to be angry a lot. Hair trigger, temper, uh, lack of emotional control, at, at the, whole, the whole gamut. But I would probably start with Brain Jim's pace or something in this area because I can't see anybody. It's as good of a brain tune-up as you can get. Okay. Well, good. Well, this is, to me, it's just fascinating. I, I love yes. I love listening to you. It's uh, wonderful. Let's take a, a short break, and then we'll come okay. back. When we come back, what I'd like to do is have you tell us about some of your successes. And it doesn't have to be on brain generate. If there are other techniques that you want to tell us about, uh, successes with clients, and then move into, is there a an opportunity in athletics to deal oh, yeah. with, with this also? So we'll do that when we come back for a part. Okay, two. great. All right, thanks. Thank you.